being able to worship, fellowship. Um, we're going to go into worship. I just ask if you can stand. You stand. If you can't, just worship how you can. And uh, let's just give this time to God. No, this is different, but this is still good. We are gods, and we are here, and we are 
together and we can praise regardless of our circumstances. Some of you are probably going, man, why is Abraham on the screen? Here, let Abraham explain that himself. Where's the... He said, what do you want? He got it for himself. This is awkward. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know um, I'm not here today because we got married. I just wanted to let you guys know um, I love every single one of you. Um, thank you for everything you guys have done. We'll be back to celebrate next week. Hope to see everybody there. Thank you. Love Happy you guys. Sunday. And condolences to Tim. Tim's mom died this week, and and I didn't bug Tim. I heard from a, a good source that, that don't bug Tim this week. Um, and Mario's gone, and um, this is us today. Can we worship? Lord, thank you for this chance to be together. Oh, and I pray for our community. I pray for our church, and I pray that you will reach down and have your way, that you will touch us even in the middle of this COVID pandemic and all the things that we're dealing with. We are together. We thank you, and we choose to worship you today. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome, kids. Glad you're here. Now, on the count of three, just like I've been doing online, I want everybody, not just the kids, to shout out your names to me. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Great job, boys and girls. <laughs> Welcome to Coda and Liliana and Juliana. Yay! <laughs> okay, so question for everyone, especially the kids, though. What are some of the rules that your parents have for you or lessons that they're always trying to teach you, like you hear over and over and over again? Can you guys think of anything? What are your parents always telling you? Any ideas? Clean up. <laughs> so, what, clean your room? Yes, you might hear that a lot. Do your homework. <laughs> Anything else? Maybe think, be thinking while we watch this little clip from Bambi. He doesn't walk very good, does he? Jumper? Yes, Mama. What did your father tell you this morning? If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Just eat the blossoms. That's the good stuff. Jumper? Yes, Mama. What did your father tell you? About what? About eating the blossoms and leaving the greens. Oh, that one. <coughs> eating greens is a special treat. It makes long ears and great big feet. But it sure is awful stuff to eat. I made that last part up myself. What did your father tell you? About what? About playing with your sisters. A family that plays together um, stays together. Even if it means taking your dumb sisters. <laughs> one did you did you notice eat your greens and play nicely with your siblings those are all good lessons for us to learn as well did anyone think of any other lessons that your parents like to
to teach you over and over. All right, well, we are starting a four week series on life lessons you learned as a kid. And today we're talking about one of the most famous things. This is like real hard to keep on while I'm talking. Okay. One of the most famous things that people know from the life of Jesus, which is very similar to something that Thumper's dad taught him, that Ray Ann said. So what do you think we're learning about today? Very similar to, and sometimes it's called the golden rule. Does anyone know the golden rule? Thank you, Marsha. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so the whole verse from Matthew 7, 12 says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and prophets. So let's look at what this means. Who here just loves pickles and would love to have this jar of pickles? Okay, you get lucky because you're right in the front <laughs> and center. Now... Just because you love pickles, does that mean that everyone loves pickles? Yeah. Now, are you happy that I gave you that jar of pickles? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you gave me a jar of pickles, I'd be like, gross, it's disgusting. That's not how I want to be treated. I would think it was an insult if you gave me a pickle. <laughs> so, we all have different likes and dislikes. We have different things that make us feel loved. And so this, this rule that Jesus taught about treating other people the way we want to be treated doesn't mean exactly the same way. But we can get some clues in the Bible of how to treat each other. And the only way we can do it is with the empowering of the Holy Spirit that the Apostle Paul teaches about in Galatians 5, 22 to 24. So we're going to do a little game. You ready, kids? We're going to look up here on the screen, and there's going to be two choices, and every, everyone can play. So I'm going to read the choices, and then you'll say whether you would rather have number one or number two, and we'll see which fruit of the Spirit is revealed by that action. All right, so do you want someone to share their food with you if you're hungry or keep it all to themselves? Oh, we don't have the screen yet. And the next one? There we go. So one or two? Do you want them to share their food? Yeah, let's see. And that reveals a type of, everyone read it as soon as it goes. Can you read it? Love. Good. Now, do you want someone, well, you might not be able to see them with their mask on, but do you want someone to scowl? Here, I'll show you real quick. Like that. Or smile at you. What do you want? Let's see. What does this reveal? Joy. Nice. Do you want someone to give you the time you need or to just keep saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up? What do you think? <laughs> oh. Did I skip one? Oh, I did skip one. <laughs> Offer forgiveness or stay mad at you? I heard Dakota say, Offer forgiveness. And this fruit is? Good. Now, sorry, I skipped that one. Give you the time you need or keep telling you to hurry up? fruit is patience nice do you want someone to push you down or to help you up and this reveals kindness do you want someone to steal from you or to return something that you lost nice and this what fruit is this at you, or to use their words to tell you why they're mad. <laughs> yes, and this reveals the last fruit of the Spirit. Whew, that is a lot. So let's read off the fruits of the Spirit. It's kind of hard because they're not in like an order on this, but love, 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, boys and girls, Jesus taught us, with both his words and his actions, to treat others the way we want to be treated. And we can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, let's practice today's memory verse. So first I'll read it, and then you guys can follow. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and prophets. All right, repeat after me. Ready? Matthew 7, 12. No, Matthew 7, 12. <laughs> Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and prophets. I hear a lot of people on this side, not so many law and prophets. This keeps going down. All right. This week I pray that you treat others with love, joy, peace, and all the fruits of the Spirit. May God bless you abundantly this week. All right. And we are going to sing a couple more songs and worship God. So if you guys would all stand, that would be awesome.
like shooting star burning up the night till heaven's open and we arrive in your presence, in your presence, let our mercies rise, all creation knows. Join with me in song, singing out in praise, Come on, hurry, come on, let's go. They're waiting. Wait, come on. Where, where are you going? We don't have time for this. It's, I've almost missed it, it's time to preach. Yeah, where are you going? This is the teaching time, come on. Okay, okay. Just like normal. Go Wait. there with the tripod. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry. I should have been better prepared. Pa Pastor hold Bob. On. Hold, just hold on. Um. You know the congregation's waiting, waiting out there in the sanctuary? You are muddling this with detail. This is the teaching time. Pastor Carrie, this has been incredibly convenient. Um, Pastor Paul, I, I think they're expecting you to preach in the sanctuary. Yeah, I'm live cast, right? Uh, I'm there, right? Um, yeah. Good morning. Oh, it is good to see all of you this morning. Pastor Paul, I, I, I think I really need to insist. <laughs> okay. Carrie, this is so comfortable. I've got my coffee. I have the scripture. I have a chair. I, is it all about comfort, Pastor Paul? You're gonna... Good morning! Really? Are you going to keep hassling me? Yes. You're going to make me go stand up? Yes. Okay. Are we ready? Let's get back to this. Good morning for real. Wait, Pastor Paul, you're trapped on the screen. You're still not here in real life. Ah. Oh. oh, Inception. Good morning. Are you guys ready for today? Are you sure? I've got my little piece of plexiglass. You can see some facial expressions. We've practiced our body language, right? Are you ready for today? You know, I could get used to this. Even when the masks go away, the hands should still stay up. This is going to be okay. Oh, it is so good to see you here this morning. Can you believe it? How many years has it been? 80. It, it, it seems like it's been an incredibly long time. Even if we don't remember it, most of us recognize that we saw the world differently as children, right? Right? So many of the most important lessons of life we learned when we were a child. Now, over the next four weeks, we're going to explore some of those memories and summertime stories. What we learned as a kid that still, at least theoretically, should stick with us today as adults. Oh, and by the way, I need to add this little disclaimer here. Over these last few weeks, one of the things that my family has really enjoyed don't take this wrong, because I miss you, and it is so good to be back. But it was such a pleasure to worship with Dakota at home where she got to make noise. So to the best of your ability, if the kids pipe out a question, or if there's a little bit of noise, hopefully we'll be okay. Is that, 
because that was such a blessing to have that interaction during these few weeks. And we're here together as family. And we are here together. And one more thing that, that might work, I thought of this, that we are live casting this pretty much at the same time. And Apple makes these cool headsets that noise cancel. So if it's too bad in here, you can just bring your headset, listen to it online, and... and for all the noise around it. <laughs> but for the next four weeks, we're going to be exploring lessons, including the golden rule of patience, self-control, and happiness. Who likes rules? Oh, let's try that again. Who likes rules? Gene, I see that hand, right? Steve? Tim? Claudia? Lydia loves rules. Really? Carrie, 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 Carrie does like rules. She, she loves rules. It makes her crazy if we don't have the rules well defined because rules help you figure out how to live right. Yes? Ah, but we have rules, don't we? Here's some of the silly ones. I thought this was kind of fun. Did you know in California, a frog that dies during a frog jumping contest cannot be eaten and must be destroyed as soon as possible. I, I have to wonder how many frogs died and were eaten with bad results before that became a law. In Delaware, it's a misdemeanor to sell, barter, or offer the fur of a cat. So much for marketing little kitty fur face masks. Too much? Okay. In Idaho, Cannibalism is strictly prohibited and punishable by up to 14 years in prison. I think that's reasonable. In Minnesota, any game which participants attempt to capture a greased or oiled pig is illegal. I thought this one was fun. In Wyoming, you can't cut, sever, detach, or mutilate more than one half of a sheep's ear. Violations are a felony offense, punishable by up to five years in prison, but less than one half of a year. I think that's a weird one. Totally fine. In Ohio, every operator of an underground coal mine must provide an adequate supply of toilet paper with each toilet. How bad did it get before they had to make having toilet paper a law? And last but not least, human trafficking violates too many international laws to count, right? But Pennsylvania felt the need to specify that you can't barter a baby. But if you find yourself swapping goods for your precious bundle of joy, it's only a misdemeanor. Can you believe that? This has been too many years to count, but, but my third child, Reagan, my daughter, was a priceless thing, very sensitive, and, and, and her first day of kindergarten, because Reagan really wasn't fond of rules, and she didn't need a whole lot of persuasion because she was sensitive, and we picked her up from school hoping that it would go all right. When we picked her up, her face was like this. got in the car, and, and you've got to realize part of it is that this was the brand new opening of a charter school way back when, and that they were meeting in portables, and these portables were in a church parking lot, and so there wasn't a whole lot for these kids to do, but she gets in the car, and we go, Reagan, how was school? She was quiet. Reagan, how was school? Who's many's rules? And then on her own, in the back of the car, she acts like she's pretending. Hold one, two, three, flush. Wait, one, two, three, four, slide. Stand straight, sit still. And she continued to list what was required at this school to be in kindergarten. She never really did adjust to school. But rules are part of life, true? 
you have your scripture, one of the rules that we're all familiar with, if you turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Lord, I thank you for your scripture. I thank you for being together. I thank you for the chance to to feast on your word. So God, speak to us this morning, whether we are two or four or 102, those that are here in this building and those that are watching this in their homes, I thank you for who you are in this church. Amen. Robert Fulgham talks about the aha moment in writing his book, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. Fulgham writes, I realized that I had already know most of what's necessary to live a meaningful life, that it isn't all that complicated. I know it, and I've known it for a long, long time. Now living it? Ah, well, that's another matter. Yes? Here's my credo, he continues. All I really needed to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sand pile at Sunday school. These are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work some every day. Take a nap every afternoon. Come on now. And when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Stick together. In chapter 5 of his letter to the church in Galatia, the Apostle Paul writes about two ways of living. One that is about us and one that is about God. Not us. The life lived according to the Spirit is one that expresses the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful, sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. The greatest commandment, Jesus says, is to love God. And intertwined with that is to love others, right? Love God and love others, and this leads us to the golden rule. If we claim to be followers of Jesus, we are commanded to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and we are commanded to love others as ourselves. How do we do that? We at least start by treating people the way that we want to to be treated. Life in the Spirit is about love. Life in the Spirit is about love. Treating others the way you want to be treated is an act of love. And by the way, love is action. When we talk about love, it isn't simply a feeling. A love is action. It's what you do. It's what you choose to do to make a difference in and for someone. Now, that doesn't mean you do exactly what you want others to do to you. Does that make sense? If you love liver and onions, you don't need to serve everyone liver and onions just because you love them. It's better to find out what someone else might like. If you have people over for dinner, often the question that we'll ask is, is there anything you really like? Or sometimes I go, is there anything you really hate? We'd at least want to avoid the hate part of it or that you're a 
allergic to. If you want to be affirmed, affirm others. If you want to know you are valued, it is good to let others know that they have value. If you want a second chance when you blow it, anyone ever blow it in here? Anyone ever blow it that's watching online? Probably. If you want a second chance when you blow it, it's a good idea to make sure you let others know that they can have a second chance when they blow it. But, but we usually don't do this very well, do we? This isn't as natural for so many of us. Our human nature tends to look out for itself. Here's the catch. We really can't live out the fruit of the Spirit unless we're filled with the Spirit. Isn't that catchy? We can't really live out the fruit of the Spirit. We really can't live these things out well unless we're filled with God. If we're going to be filled with God, it means we, we invite Him to fill us. It, it means we take down the barriers. It means we put ourselves aside and we allow God to do what He wants to do. I love the way that this is summed up in the message version, the paraphrase of this scripture, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But what happens? What happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energy wisely. Key point today? Really, quite simple. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught. I love that, the essence. This sums it up. This describes the main point. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, do to others whatever you'd like them to do to you. It's hard to tell what is more remarkable, that something so simple could be so hard to live out, or that the entirety of Scripture is wrapped up in this. It is rather remarkable, isn't it? It's summed up in such a simple statement to treat others the way that you wish to be treated. God's desire for his people is that they live in such a way that they consider the needs of others first. And when we live this way, we are living out God's will. Do whatever you'd like them to do to you this really is a big statement I, just think about it how encompassing the words of jesus are in terms of life in terms of relationships in terms of neighbors do whatever you would like them to do to you how are you doing little you don't have to clap your arms for this little self-assessment how are you doing when it comes to treating others in such a way that they see christ in you is it easier to treat others well when you're a child or does it get easier when you're an adult is it easier to deal with the playground bully or the office bully is it easier to deal with demands when you're five or demands when you're 55 we kind of lived all over growing up my dad's a pastor and my parents are actually here welcome they're watching this online this morning at the house and one of the places i lived the, the most for the most part memorable place growing up was denaire california um, i was a, a seminary baby born in kansas city we we moved to los banas california when i was i believe three and at the age of four moved to denaire and i was there up until about halfway into the fourth grade the grade school, to give you a little picture of this community, it was a very small community. The, the grade school itself was attached to the junior high and high school. It was all on one property, and every class had a grade. 
We all pretty much played on the same playground. I was one of the smallest kids at school, and still not all that tall today, and unfortunately seem to be getting shorter again. I'm not sure how that works. But I was one of the smallest ones, but in Denair, it was okay. But, but the harsh part of the story is I had a really good friend. My best friend at that time was John Frisk, and we had a really, really amazing friend, Thomas. Thomas Hutchback, not Hunchback. Thomas was big for a kid. He was the protector. I loved to play, but what I didn't realize is that when a new kid came to school, man, we ran them through the ringer. They had to more or less prove themselves. There wasn't really anything new in the playground psychology of sociology of life, but it was harsh. I didn't realize how harsh it was until middle of fourth grade. I moved to Sacramento, California and became the minority in every sense you can imagine. And where instead of being the one that ran the other kids through the ringers to see if they fit in or didn't fit in, I became the one that didn't fit in. And one of the things that hit me as I experienced that time in life was how sorry I was for what I did to others. It was a life lesson I will never forget. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Teaching our kids that is critical. Living that out is critical. And it really isn't that complicated. It really isn't. Be nice. Treat people well. Treat people with respect. But sometimes we take the golden rule and we treat others the way you want to be treated and we still make it about us. Let me see if I can say that again. Sometimes we take this, I want to treat others the way I want to be treated and we still make that about us. So here's just a few golden rule don'ts. Just three of them. You could probably come up with more. Just three of them, how we convolute the golden rule. First, be nice to others so they'll be nice to you. Anyone ever play that? As kids, it becomes especially true. This attitude is really manipulation disguised as kindness. This twist on the golden rule is to treat others nicely, not because we would appreciate it if others treated us nicely, or not simply because we are nice people. We treat others nicely so that we can get something out of it. It's, I'll scratch your back if you'll scratch my back. The spirit of the golden rule is to treat others like you wish to be treated without expectation one way or the other. This one's more difficult than getting something in return. If you give a gift and give a better gift and get a better gift back, it's pretty good, right? It's no longer a gift. A gift is something you give away. Kindness should be something that you give away. This can include a spouse that may think, I helped him vacuum, so I get control of the remote tonight. No, fair game if you make a deal ahead of time. That's a different story. But having expectations tied to your kindness doesn't work, whether you're a kid or an adult. Often kids, Dakota, would this be true? Where if you give someone a toy, sometimes you think they're going to give a toy back? Yeah, it just seems to be part of life. But that still misses the point of the golden rule that if you are nice, if you give, it's without expectation. The next one is, don't be nice to others so they know how great you are. Don't be nice to others so they know how great you are. This is one of those that we fall into. We actually can plan and scheme and dream of how we can treat other people or how we can be visible. Jesus talks about this quite a bit with the Pharisees and Sadducees, saying, don't, you wear it out loud. If you do it on the outside, but you're not meaning this on the inside, it's garbage, it's worthless don't do it stop motive is everything see we can only see what's on the outside true but motive what's in our heart is what jesus talks about this becomes the foundation of this rule jesus made it clear it isn't just what you show that counts but it's what's on the inside that matters if you're nice simply to to impress others or to look great or to win an election, or to avoid embarrassment, 
you've missed the point. Jesus doesn't ask us to be nice so others think we are great. God commands for us to be nice because we are a reflection of him. If we claim to be a follower of Christ, we reflect Jesus. We reflect God. We reflect this nature of grace. And then the last golden rule, don't do. Don't do to others before they do it to you. Yeah, it is kind of funny, but it's true. How often do we live defensively? I'm just going to get this in before they do, which is insecurity. This is a cynical twist on the golden rule. It forces us to look at others with a skeptical and guarded eye. Basically, it's I'm going to stab you in the back before you stab me. Not literally kids. We're not stabbing anyone here. There are times we treat people poorly because we expect to be treated poorly. I want you to hear this. At times we treat people poorly because we expect to be treated poorly and we get ours in first. It's a pain inflicting and pain avoiding view of the golden rule. Getting others before they get us is insecurity at its worst, at its most blatant. The truth is, Living out the golden rule is risky. Giving ourselves away to people is risky. Opening up our hearts to people is risky. Serving is risky. You might get rejected. You might get made fun of. You, people may look at you and go, why in the world would you do this? In this day and age, if you're nice, people often first assume that you're after something. Right? Man, why were you nice to me? What do you want? What are you after? I don't have any money. What are you doing? What's, what's the catch? We have the chance to go, no catch. Hear that again. We get to surprise the world with no strings attached. No catch. We have the chance to love our spouse, no strings attached. No catch. We have the chance to help teach our kids to love others with no strings attached there's no catch if you were ever thinking i'll push your buttons before you push mine you're you may still be in middle school seems to be the way of life or you've just missed the point you've missed the point of what god calls us to what does god call us to how does god call us to live well if you really desire life whatever age you are the best life is found in jesus if you desire deep peace peace you find is in jesus if you need help loving others without strings attached without expectation the only place you're really going to find that freedom is in connection to jesus a Connection to the Holy Spirit, a release of our own agenda. What life? Do you find life in giving yourself away? Best life is lived when we care, when we're open, when we are vulnerable, when we open our spirits and ask God to literally shine through us. I don't want to make just a note here. More often than not, this is through our eyes. Because we're living in a time. This was the first week where any place I went, which granted wasn't very many, but the first week where everywhere I went, and including Popper Murphy's to get pizza Thursday night when my parents arrived, I'd forgotten my mask and I took the wrong car. I didn't have a mask in my car. I didn't even think about it. I walked in and they said, very nicely, they said, we can't serve you without a mask. I said, can I order from the door? They said, no, you have to have a mask. There's a lady in there. And she said, oh, oh, I've got an extra in my car. Let me go get it for you. What a blessing. But her eyes had lines. This is an encouragement. Even if we can't see our smiles for whatever timeline 
a little scary, isn't it, to be honest? But your eyes can shine light. Your eyes are the windows into your soul and what God is doing. And ah, I encourage you to let Jesus shine through your eyes, even if your smiles are covered. Paul writes again about two ways of living. One that is about us, and one that is about God, not us. Again, but what happens when we live God's way? Paul says he brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. My invitation to you this morning, we look at summer stories, we look at our families and our kids and our grandkids, my challenge to you is, is to seek this freedom, the, the kindness, the, the nice, the grace that comes from our living God. We are His. And if you're struggling, if parts of this message, especially the parts where, man, we don't get something back when we give ourselves away? Eh, sometimes. We actually, I believe, get all of life back when we give ourselves away. But we don't always feel it in the moment, in the present. Or maybe you're on the other end of it going, oh, pastor, I'm in a situation at work where it's just devastating. I'm not sure I can take it anymore. There is such meanness there is such friction or pastor I can't seem to get my kid to look out for anyone but themselves I encourage you this morning in these few minutes of prayer to, to simply lay it down ask God to fill you with fresh fire and breath And to touch you right where you're at. Take some time to simply pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that we don't have to do this on our own. That we're never meant to do this on our own. I praise you that you have given us the Holy Spirit to give us life beyond ourselves. Life beyond anything that we can imagine. So, God, I pray that you'll pour your Holy Spirit out now on those that are here live and those that are watching this online. Challenge us at our very core with anything we may still be carrying. God, I pray that there will be healing for our insecurities. That there would be your breath and your life as we seek your face and your holiness. God, I thank you for the chance we have to make a difference in this world by simply treating other people with kindness. God, help us surprise this world. Lord, I specifically lift up those this morning that, that need you. I want to give praise for Abraham and Julia and their wedding yesterday and man this was a long time waiting what a such so hard in both, both of their attitudes God I am so thankful for what a blessing I pray that there will be joy from day one as they build life together and Lord I lift up Tim and his siblings and his family that you would bring peace and closure death of Tim's mom. And I thank you so much for the kids and for life. 
for who you have called us to be. We need you, Jesus. Amen. abounds in deepest waters, sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't stop. This is your day. I thank you that we can praise you and worship you. 
be continually transformed by you. Amen. Okay, we can turn the house lights back on. I'm not going to necessarily go up there and make sure that I've got everything here. Now, a few things are a little bit different. Fine, if you prefer a check or cash or your children, you can put them in the box in the back. I'm not sure that children will fit, but it's, it's there. You can try. And make sure I'm not missing something. Ah, yes, Curtis. Stand up. Folks, this is Curtis. Curtis James. No, stay standing unless you've got to switch something. Curtis, oh, he's got to switch something. He's got to make sure it's working. Curtis is a friend of Pastor Carey's from Napa First Church of the Nazarene, and he's been involving himself in our online presence for the last few weeks and said, hey, I have the summer. I will come help you for free and be a summer intern in media as you start doing live casting. And I just love being reminded that there's a God. Isn't that just cool? You missed that part. Yes. Amen. Woo! I love being reminded, and, and just for these last, man, last few days, he's, you got here Tuesday, right? Have you slept much since Tuesday? Not last night. This is, this is actually pretty complicated, but we're trying to make sure that those that need to stay home, that, that we're able to worship together and fully. But Curtis, welcome. And we have a, oh, yes. Ashley, welcome back. Man, and, and Brian, and Brian, don't, don't worry, and Brian. We, oh, we've missed you. Welcome back, and thank you for sharing online with us a few weeks ago. This is home, and I am so glad that you're here and you're beautiful kids. Woo! Give a cheer. <laughs> See, we don't get this in, in the video production. This is, I've missed, man, I've missed you all. We have a, announcements in just a minute. Make sure I'm doing this in order. Okay, let's go ahead and do the announcements and I'll wrap up. So I see in these. I'm your host, Isabel Zitzny. First of all, welcome back to Live Church. And welcome to everybody who's watching the live stream. Every week, we're going to have a link to the live stream on our website. Activities this week. Wednesday, the prime time Bible study is at 10 a.m. Friday at 11 a.m., you're going to have a Zoom call with Pastor Paul of the devotional... And Friday, we have a youth group hangout at 3.30 in the upper room. And only if you wear your mask. A week from today, we are going to have a fireside devotional in the backyard at 6. Thank you, Curtis James, for coming up all the way from Nampa, Idaho to be here for a couple of weeks and help out. Hello, I'm Curtis. I'm so glad I am here and I am excited to um, get to know each and every one of you. For the next few weeks, the preaching series will be Summer Stories, Life Lessons You Learned as a Kid. Thanks for joining us. That's all. We're going to wrap up with, and, and you'll enjoy this last song, all, the, all of you that participating, if you didn't. And we're not going to pass around the offering, but you can sure get prepared if you're going to drop it or, or online. There's pews at the table. And I want to just thank you for your continued giving, your faithfulness. This has been, this has been long. It's been hard. And at the same time, we want to be faithful to our mission to be Christ in this neighborhood and to be his church. So thank you, thank you. And if, if giving hasn't been a part of your life, I challenge you to, to make it. That way, if God is touching, because God will bless you through giving. It's a promise that we have. Lord, thank you for the chance to give. I thank you again for 
family worship and for all you are doing and for life. Use this offering, bless it, build your church, amen. Who am I that the highest king would well come me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun says free. Ransomed me, oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died. Today and this week, leave this place in peace and with joy and with kindness and with love.